uh, let's prepare to give our attention to our speaker, Ms. Athena Aliafe Abe, who has quite the impressive background, having graduated magna cum laude from St. Paul University in Manila uh, with a Bachelor of Com Science in Computer Science. She is now a technical community manager, a content creator, uh, a mentor with and with a lot of experience in public speaking, which we have all the honor of witnessing today while she gives us her talk on project management. So hello, both Miss Abe. The mic is now yours. Hi, Zia. Thank you for that introduction. And thank you to IUST for having me. And all right, let me begin by sharing my screen. I can see the reactions. Hi, guys. I'm seeing familiar names here. Hi, Jim. Hi, um, Bernice. Okay, let's see. Share a window. Okay. Oh, I just want to make sure I'm sharing the correct screen. Wait long. Okay. All right. Let me know if you can see it now. All good? Yes, all good. Okay, thank you. All right. So today I will be talking about the introduction to project management. I've already been introduced, but I'm, I'm no longer working as a technical community manager, but I have had um, more uh, almost two years experience in um, project management. I'm currently working um, for a restaurant technology company based in New York as a technical support specialist and KCS coach. I've also um, um, did application analyst work, social media. I'm currently an angel hack ambassador. I also um, am a mentor and do speaking engagements, and I'm based here in San Diego, California. Um, it's currently um, 10 p.m. here Friday. Ayan. So I believe most of us, also, siyempre tayo, we've had experiences and a lot of lessons learning about project management as students. And definitely, um, I'll be sharing with you how um, project management is in the industry and also in any types of industry. But before I begin, I, and I always like to start my presentation with a question. So the question for you is, Ayan, with our 68 viewers right now, what was the most memorable project that you have worked on and why? From your projects, Ayan, going back to, let's say, high school, what uh, what would be the most memorable project that you have worked on and why? May, uh, may it be good, unforgettable, ayan, stressful? Let us know. Bakit hindi nyo sa makalimutan? Did you feel accomplished? Or did you feel na hala sana um, kinalingan ko pa pala when I did this project? Ayan, anyone? The first thing that comes to your mind. Sabi ni Marcy, talking to clients, medyo nakakakaba. Definitely, ayan. Definitely talking to the people that you're going to be working with um, on a project is definitely um, nakakakaba talaga siya. Ayan. Anybody else? I think we can hear from um, three more people before we proceed. So we would be able to um, connect in your current and present experiences in our um, topic for today, which is project management. Ayan. How about school um, projects? PC, sabi ni Lo, um, Noel. Yes, definitely. Bakit yun yung pinaka-memorable project for you, Noel? Ayan, why? Ayan, while we're waiting for their answers, um, others can definitely share theirs as well. Ayan. Definitely, this is a roller coaster of feelings, yan. Um, definitely, and dami nyo matututunan sa isat isa. Um, thesis nyo nung high school, senior high, and college. Sabi ni Brenly, my library system po. Super hirap at first web app ko po with Android pa. Ayan, definitely. That type of project can be challenging, but definitely you will be um, fulfilled pag na-accomplish mo siya. Sabi ni Jem, tech project. Memorable dahil na nga pa, paano umusad, no knowledge, and hindi nag-guide. Ayan. Thank you for those answers, guys. And definitely doing a project without any guide or roadmap can be um, challenging talaga. 
and especially if you don't know what um, path you'd be taking, it would take you more longer to um, finish the project, definitely. Ayan, thank you for your active participation and looking forward for your engagement throughout the presentation as well. So we're just going to talk about the fundamentals of project management. And if you are interested and damning opportunities in the tech field, later you'll be learning about how to become a data analyst and how to become a web developer. If you are currently watching and you're a tech student or kahit hindi ka tech student, you want to have a career in the tech industry as well, there's more than just um, uh, being a developer, a programmer, you can also become a project um, manager. And product manager, program manager, there are a lot of different opportunities, especially kung hindi mo pa alam kung anong gustong role mo makuha in the tech field. Ayan. And I honestly didn't know na may ganito palang opportunity when I started because I became a technical community manager when I was in I, I would say third year college student ako nun. And definitely, hindi naman tinuturo sa atin to sa school. I believe walang course sa USP niyan. Pero marirealize pala natin yung mga projects and tasks and assignment na pinapagawa sa atin ng mga professors natin. Dito natin na, na, natututunan or na-enrich yung skills natin when it comes to organizing, multitasking, and also being able to um, complete a specific type of task or project. And to define project, ayan, the word project means a temporary endeavor that has a specific and unique goal. Ayan. When we talk about goals, it can be a product, a service, or an outcome. So if you're currently, tulad ng sabi nyo, um, you're currently doing your thesis or your capstone project, what is your end goal? Is your end goal tulad nila na gumawa ng library system? What type of library system? Tulad nyo nakalagay web app, and it is um, for Android um, phones. Ayan. Um, you can also specify what type of tech project that you are doing. Ano yung uh, magiging end product, service, and outcome. Ayan. And in project management, you would always be thinking, mag-iisip ka, magpa-plano ka on how to identify the answer to the question. So here, got some guide questions. Mostly ng um, project management is the way for you to be able to have a, a roadmap or a path is to always uh, take note of these questions. So in project management, we would be answering the question, what problem are you solving? May it be um, creating an application or kahit um, personal um, projects nyo in different types of fields, project management is applicable. And how are you going to solve this? What tools or what methods are you going to use in order to solve this problem? How many people are you going to involve and work with to be able to meet the goals or the requirements of this specific project? Ayan. And of course, again, we have a project, we have um, requirements, and we also have solution. So what are those types of solutions? Ayan. We would be, um, aside to requirements, there are organizational requirements given by the stakeholders. There are deliverables and there are also scopes. Tulad sa thesis, di ba, meron tayong um, objectives and meron din tayong scope and limitations. Dun siya pumapasok. From there, you'll be having a layout or an overview of your plan. Ayan. And here in project management, when you have a plan, you'll be needing to know what type of work that you are doing. So my experience as a community manager, I was helping build the community uh, for AWS or Amazon Web Services. Uh, that's what I did. And we helped um, to, be, to be able to build that community. I was also working alongside with other technical community managers. And our work is to be able to help them be in a community that, would, uh, that they would feel that they are learning and being inspired from other mentors, providing a lot of free resources. Ayan tulad dyan, ang resources naman na ibig sabihin yan on the top left, the number one, is about the, uh, mostly the tools that you will be using as a um, project manager. So kahit hindi ka project manager ngayon, think of yourself, lalo na sa mga nagtitesis dyan or gumagawa ng outputs nila, place yourselves in um, 
na a role of a project manager na ano ba yung effective tools na pwede kong gamitin mga certain apps, mga task schedulers or mga presentation applications na pwede kong gamitin in order for me to be effective in what um I am doing and also para ma to be more efficient and have convenience in my planning phase. Ayan, schedule. Importante talaga ang um, scheduling sa planning. Um, if you don't um, schedule the plans, it would be magiging magulo siya, not organized, and you'd be able, hindi mo mamimi yung um, deadline or yung end ng project mo. And then processes, I imagine na uh, nadoble ko siya, pero I'll be showing with you the different processes in project management. Next is success criteria. So there are certain projects na even though you wouldn't be able to may mga, diba, in thesis, meron tayong qualitative and quantitative research. In project management, we would still be, we would still need to show yung progress or magiging success criteria natin that, that shows that the project is progressing and to be able to identify the um, timeline for completion. So there's, uh, it should always be quantifiable na, uh, for example, in three days, dapat meron na, ma finalize na natin yung scope natin so that in the next um, phase or the next stage, you'll be able to do the next step, which is to uh, develop. Next is skills. So in project management, you would be needing these following skills. Uh, it depends on the type of project, but mostly technical skills. Um, technical in a way that say, for example, I'm working for a restaurant technology company right now. And of course, if I put myself as a project manager, um, I should be able to understand yung technicalities ng isang restaurant technology company. So uh, working there, we have our POS systems or what we call point of sale. So to be able to work with other people, to be able to promote the product, you should be able to know the technical know-how of that type of industry. So um, other things, may it be ed tech, restaurant tech, hospitality, business, etc. So you'll be able to understand kasi paano ka makakapagbigay ng solusyon sa isang problema kung hindi mo naiintindihan yung problema na tinatry mong isolve. So business expertise, how the business goes, and ano yung um, need mo matutunan with your stakeholders and the level of roles. Siyempre, problem-solving skills. Interpersonal and leadership. Tulad ng sabi ni Noel, I need Marcy, talking to clients, medyo nakakaba. So you need to learn how to talk with other people, to empathize, malaking bagay with project management is to understand each other. Say, for example, thesis. I would say for me, if I'm go going to be asked that question kanina, thesis din talaga, no college ako, it was my um, unforgettable experience. Kasi sabi ng prof namin, um, nung third year pa lang kami, oh, magtitesis na kayo, paghandaan niyo na yan, magiging toxic yan. Nung una hindi kami naniwala kasi yung mga magiging thesis mates ko, we're, we're really close. Um, close naman kami, we're in good terms naman lahat kami. Then, the time comes in thesis, ayan na, nagkakaroon na ng problema. Ay, hindi ko magagawa to, ganyan. Ay, kasi may kailangan ako gawin, ganyan. So, medyo nagkatutuin yung sinabi ng prof namin, pero um, if you have good, um, if you have applied yung mga project management techniques, how to delegate tasks, and how to be accountable of your responsibility, and how to help each other, understand each other, that um, it would be, helpful kaysa magsisihan pa kayo lalo na thesis talagang can be challenging yan but always be um ready in those types of situations so say for example ito yung nakaplano hindi natuloy ano yung gagawin mo what will be the next step how are you going to be able to still stay on the timeline even though this specific task was not performed on the said day and and Life cycle number four, I'll be showing you different project management approaches. We have waterfall and agile. I believe those approaches have also been introduced somewhat um, on specific courses, I believe, because it was part of our um, curriculum. Ayan. So first is waterfall approach. And ito na din yung five phases of project management. We have initiate. Ayan. Me. 
One moment. I've prepared here my notes. Ayan. So with initiate, uh, from here you'd be able to define your project. Initiate, start it. And from here, dito mo din ma-assess ma yung scope mo. Say, for example, you're going to create a library system. Anong, if you're going to create a library system, when you hear the word library, masyado pang big yan, masyado pang malawak. Are you going to create a library system specifically for your school? And if so, if you're going to create a library system, are you going to accommodate all of the programs or we, we would also call them courses in your school? Or are you only going to create a library system for tech students, for nursing students, etc.? Itong mga um, library system ba nagagawin mo would only include books, ebooks, journals, um, mga artifacts, etc. Yung mga other things na included or provided by your um, school library. Ayan. And detor, uh, determine the resources needed. Ito bang library system na to? What would be the budget? Another thing na hindi ko expect when I started uh, being a community manager was budgeting. You should be able to um, learn and identify how you're going to um, like budget yung project requirements nyo or gagastos ka ba sa the people that you're going to work with and we also call them resources and are you um, also going to need to budget for the tools that you'll be using say subscription for a certain application that you'd be needing premium access to or monthly subscription when we had our thesis we needed to pay for Heroku if I'm not mistaken to be able to test our website our um, web application, yung mga domain. Kumasas din kami sa mga ganyan. And also, um, other tools. I'm not able to remember them. Pero those are some things that you also need to consider. Siyempre, as students, how are we how are we going to be able to uh, budget? And siyempre, we base it sa ipo natin. And also, um, another way for you to be able to make profit out of it is um, for you to be able to test it to other people or other forms or ways you can have those budgets or negotiate with other people without spending too much uh, from your pocket. Ayan. Identify the stakeholders. If you're going to, if you're planning to become a project manager, you should be able to identify yung um, hierarchy ng organization that you're gonna, going to be working with. When I was an application analyst, I was given a project to create a job requisition application um, using no-code power apps. I was given one month to develop that application. So isang one dapat meron na silang app for our recruitment company. And a working student ako nun, I didn't know how I'm going to be able to create an app within one month. Pero the good thing is that I was using no code. So, wala akong um, programming talaga inano dun. Mostly, may mga other scripts na need akong i-modify dun to be able to meet the requirements. But it was definitely challenging kasi I didn't know how to use the tool. And I was only given one month. And the challenge there was they given me a tight deadline and the, the stakeholder na tinatawag is the CEO of the company. So yun yung stakeholder um, na ating tinatawag or ina-identify. Stakeholders can be your client, can be the manager that you're working with. So it depends on who um, provided or who asked for you to do the project. So siling stakeholders. They can also be the one who provides funding to you and so during those one month when I was doing that project I also had to learn how to use the tool while doing that application good thing my manager back then was um, she already had experience with creating no code or low code uh, code applications so she provided me resources for me to be able to learn the tool while developing it so habang ako I was learning it at the same time. And then there are times wherein one thing I learned when I was doing the project is that I also need to frequently update the stakeholder, which is the CEO, na ito na progress, ganyan, because it came into a point that they're asking for an update and I'm not able to meet the deadline because it's hard for me to create an application 
um, with the tool that I'm not yet familiar with and nangangapa ako kasi inaaral ko pa lang siya. So yun, those are some challenges that you also need to consider if you're going to create an app or any type of project is the resources. If you're not confident that you're able to do it on your own, ask for expertise, ask for a mentor, and it will be more efficient for you na magpo-provide sila sa'yo ng tools or other resources na pwede mong gamitin para mas mapabilis yung development mo. Okay, and next is, ayan, um, ask for approval. And in certain types of projects, tulad nito, um, you'd be needing to ask for approval, especially budget. So, merong iba pang department yan, which is in finance and other um, other departments, possible na legal, possible din um, dev, dev, so finance, dev, and legal for approval of that type of project. Yung resources, um, kung need mo pa ng more teammates, ganyan, syempre iba budget yung pabayad sa kanila. Next is the planning phase. So what are you, the, it, the guide questions are, what are we going to do in this project? How are we going to do it? And how will we know when it's done? So dito, i-organize nyo na. Yung schedule nyo, ano yung gagawin nyo, sila naka-assign dito. Diba para lang siyang um, group projects. Diba if you're appointed as a leader, you should be able to practice and know how to delegate the tasks based on the strengths and weaknesses of your team members. Say, for example, you are four in a group, you'll be need needing to create, say, for example, a library system. You are the leader. So you should be able to um, know and communicate with your team members na kung ano yung pwede at kaya nilang gawin. Kasi mahirap magbigay ng isang task sa team member mo, basta mo lang ibabato sa kanya and hindi niya alam kung paano gawin. Kung hindi niya alam kung paano gawin, you guide him or her how to do it, help each other. Kasi diba, we have our different strengths and weaknesses and we help each other to be able to meet the needs. Ayan. Kasi pag hindi kayo nag-communicate, magsisisihan. And I've also had that experience in our thesis. Ayan. So kung natatamahan kayo sa sinasabi ko, you know what to do. Kung hindi mo alam kung paano gawin, binigay sa'yo. Kasi... So, say, for example, the leader provides you with the task that they think that you know how to do, pero hindi mo pala kayang gawin or alam. So, um, you need to speak up kasi the project would definitely fail and would definitely take a lot of time if you don't properly um, communicate properly. Ayan. And uh, next is execution. Definitely dito na execute mo na yung product, ipipresent mo na, ipapakita mo na sa stakeholders, and from there, you will be getting feedback, what you need to improve on, and what's the next step. And next is monitoring and controlling. In here, dito mo na makikita yung um, progress of the project. And ko compare mo of what was planned. Say, for example, ito yung nagawa namin, pero hindi ito yung nasa timeline. Say, for example, nasa stage 3 na kami, pero nandun sa timeline or sa chart is dapat nasa stage 7 na tayo. Bakit? Ano yung naging delay? Ano yung need improve? Or meron pa bang need na idagdag para makamit natin yung stage na yun? That's an example. So, this occurs throughout most of the project life cycle. Monitoring and controlling. Meron mga stand-up na tinatawag na you meet with um, the stakeholder and talk about the progress and what you guys have achieved throughout the week or bi-weekly. Those are examples. And lastly, closing. So get the client to accept project is complete. You would be needing their either verbal or um, signed agreement to confirm that the project is complete. And in here, it should also be documenting the project performance. So in thesis, um, what we did was when we have finished developing the project and we have been um, napasa na namin yung thesis namin, we also documented our learnings and experiences. So work ganun din. So if you're going to create a project, what we did with our community management project is after closing each project, we document kung ano yung na-achieve namin and kung ano yung natutunan namin. So definitely one of the learning experiences that I had um, doing project management for almost two years is to really communicate. Malahim bagayan, especially if you're working with a team um, remotely, it's hard to really um, read kung ano lang yung nakikita mo sa text. 
Iba pa rin kapag nag-video call kayo, nakikita mo yung body language, their tone of voice, kung ano pala yung gusto nilang gawin. We were also working with clients in different parts of the country, in Singapore, Australia, when I was uh, working in the Philippines pa. So, it's hard kung chat lang. Hindi mo alam kung ano yung gusto nila iparating. So, it's always important to really um, frequently talk with them. Gather lessons learned, close the contacts, help resources move to the next assignment or project. So, that is waterfall approach. Ayan. Sabi dito, gulo mo isip ko. Is waterfall appro uh, the best approach? Ayan. I know right now it can be overwhelming. Acha, and ang dami mo nang ina, ano, teka lang. Um, Ganto pala kahirap ang project management. Parang ang dami kong kailangan sa uluhin, ganyan. Nahihirap pa na nga ako sa thesis ko, ganyan pa. But it can be challenging or difficult when you first um, immerse yourself with the fundamentals of project management. Ganyan na ganyan din ako nung, um, even though I already had experience when I took this course, I took a course kasi on LinkedIn Learning kasi we were provided by the company to have access to these paid courses. So, nung tinake ko to, um, project management, parang naka-overwhelming siya. Pero once you put what you learn into practice, mas magiging madali na lang siya. So, going back to the question, is waterfall the best approach? We call waterfall um, project management approach as the traditional ones. It will be the best approach if and only if it works well when the goals are clearly defined. Ibig sabihin, kapag sure na sure ka na, ito lang yung scope, ito lang yung need natin gawin, waterfall approach will definitely work for you. Why? Kasi alam mo, the project will be simple, mababa yung risk of it changing during the process, you'd be using familiar technology, and meron kang kasamang experience resources. So you, if you have um, experts in your team that are confident and are skilled enough to be able to pull off this project, definitely waterfall would be the best approach for you. Ayan. And next is agile approach. Dito naman sa agile approach, we have envision, speculate, adapt, and close. So four phases. With envision, ayan. So agile approach is about um, sprints deliver product uh, features at regular intervals. Dito na yung um, sprint planning, ano tiyatawag natin. And value is deli delivered sooner. The more shorter timeline. And it's more flexible, I would say. Merong more customer involvement. They would be able to engage more during the process of the project. And small independent teams are working on this type of approach. The first phase would be envision is to define the, obviously, the product vision. Ano ba yung gusto natin uh, ma-achieve? What would be the end goal? Next is to speculate. So, medyo same lang din siya as initiate but it would be more defined and more direct. Speculate is about creating, revising, and prioritizing your feature list, lalo na library system. Again, I would say library system can be vague, so it's really good for you to be able to prioritize kung ano lang ba yung gusto nyo um, product or project na gagawin. Kasi when gumawa kami ang thesis namin before was to create a web application for um, career Decision Support System. Um, talagang yun yung pinili namin kasi kami yung unang batch ng K-12 and kami mismo nahirapan kaming alamin kung anong gusto naming college course na kukunin. And syempre that time, kahit na nag-STEM ka, nag-HUMES uh, nag, um, ka, or um, ano pa ba? Techvo, HUMES, AADT, tinatawag namin before, hindi din yung, yun yung nagiging course mo sa college. Pwedeng mag-iba. And with the uh, web application that we've created when we were in college, we would be helping senior high school students identify the college course suited for them based on a quiz. So that's what we did. And kung iisipin nyo, ang um, career decision support system, masyado bang vague yan. Sa Pilipinas, napakadaming college courses. And sa school, hindi lahat ng school ay merong college courses na in-offer. So what we did was to focus lang and prioritize the college 
courses offered by our school, St. Paul University Manila, which I believe was 18 or 16 yung in-offer na courses dun sa system namin. That's how we um, are able to narrow down yung magiging scope namin and yung mga features sa aming system. Next is adapt to review results and change as needed. So dito, again, mas flexible siya kasi um, when something happens, uh, when, when you need to revise something, you're able to adapt to it. Unlike waterfall fix siya, magiging um, challenging siya kapag hindi mo na meet yung specific um, task na need mo ma-achieve. Ayan, close is same then to record lessons learned. Ayan, and dito na yung organic, um, and what on comparison pa pala siya. So here again is an overview of the waterfall versus agile approach. Waterfall again needs to be specific. And I believe I also have here a better explanation to it. So when it comes to wa um, waterfall and agile management, waterfall focuses on the scope. Yun yung nasa top niya. And downwards is it um, affects the time, the cost, and the quality. Whereas Agile, baliktad siya. It, uh, it focuses on the time, cost, and quality in such a way that the features are the uh, main focus of it. So um, piece by piece, yun yung pinofocus niya. And with Agile, um, development against sprint planning, daily scrum, sprint reviews, and envision, speculate, explore, adapt, and close. And I forgot to put explore there, but in here, you'll be able to practice adaptability more when you do or um, apply the agile approach of project management. And, and there are different um organizational hierarchies when it comes to project management. Medyo nagiging technical na tayo dito. Pero don't worry, I'm almost at the end of my presentation. So if you apply project management, we have different hierarchies. We have functional, which is the most common organizational structure. We have weak matrix, balanced matrix, strong matrix, and projectized. Usually, tatlo lang siya, functional, matrix, and projectized. So what does this mean, Acha? Bakit? May mga hierarchy sa project management. Going back to the stakeholders, um, there are different types of hierarchies or the people that you're going to be working with in a certain type of project. Hindi kagaya sa ating mga estudyante. Okay, apat kayo. Sino yung leader? Sino yung taga templa ng kape? Sino yung taga luto ng pansit kanton? At sino yung taga hood? Ganun lang sa atin, di ba? Pero in uh, project management uh, roles and um in in a certain type of organization that you're going to be working for or with you'd be focusing on the, the resources or the people that we call would it be part-time full-time supportive staff ang nil ibig sabihin yan zero so sa functional wala silang supportive staff wala silang authority uh, meaning if you're a project management uh, manager working for a functional hierarchy type of organization, you don't have any authority to this specific type of project. So, sila, you may say, yung stakeholder or what we call CEO. So, going back to my example, when I created an application working for a recruitment company, their type of hierarchy is functional. Wala akong authorization, they would be the ones to be able to make those um, decisions. When it comes to matrix, can either be low or moderate authority ang meron ka and you'd be working part-time but if you're projectized so that would be full-time everything full-time and all the responsibility and authority would be um sayo okay so yun siya when i was so when i was working as an application analyst i was in a functional hierarchy when i was working as a community manager i was definitely around the matrix type of hierarchy where when I'm able, um, where we make budgets and also be able to make little changes to the project plan. Yeah. Okay. So when it comes to these softwares, we these are the different types of project management softwares that you can explore and try. We have Microsoft Project, Oracle Primavera, Liquid Planner, Jira or Smartsheet, right? And Asana. So I've tried Jira, Smartsheet, and Asana. I would say Asana is the very 
least of my favorite kasi um, even though I uh, do a lot of project management sa computer minsan kasi di ba hindi pa rin tayo um, sanay doing everything um, online or on the computer. So we usually our team writes it down or if we don't write it down we use our Google spreadsheet. So um, the a spreadsheet is a project manager's best friend talaga and for um more of like when you want to focus on your timeline in doing a specific project i would say ang recommend ko talaga jira konti lang yung work ano ko sa smart sheet pero so far i would recommend jira asana um, my least favorite kasi although it can give you a deadline hindi din namin siya Depending sa, sa complexity ng project, since we do community management, we usually update everything on spreadsheet. But if you're going to focus on a bigger project, I would say Asana. But little complexity of the project, you can definitely go for Jira. And another um, tools that you're going to use, word processing, word, and spreadsheet, Excel, or Google Sheets, and presentation, it can be PowerPoint or Figma. Ayan. And... Ito, to make everything more simpler since I'm at the end of my presentation, if you would be able to chat what the uh, what is the meaning of SMART, ayan, diba in our project objectives at school, we practice SMART. If you're able to remember what SMART means, ayan, kindly comment it in the comment section below. Is the, are you still able to remember SMART? Lagi ang tinuturo sa atin. And with project management, for you to be able to have good objectives you should be able to practice it ayan na nagpatulong na ba kayo kay chat gpt kaya din nyo maano ayan very good marcy yes can someone provide the ayan very good ayan okay let's read it sabi ni helen specific measurable attainable realistic and time bound very good so uh, when it comes to project management it can be two things so it can be the letter A can be interchangeable, so definitely it's specific, measurable. It can be achievable or attainable, or for relevant and time-bound. Uh, time so very good, Helen, Ralph, Francesca, and JM. Ayan, very good. So kung gusto nyo magkaroon kayo ng takeaway today with everything that I say, you can definitely just say this and pagiging helpful siya sa project management niyo. Ayan, so learning about project management. Definitely, project management can overwhelm you with a lot of technical terms. Surface level pa lang to. Tulad ng sabi ni Ms. Sharon dito. Yung pinitira ko mag-review pero walang papasok sa utak mo. Definitely, I know as a college student, ang dami niyong ginajuggle and I really applaud you guys for that. Pero I hope with this presentation may natutunan kayo. And definitely, project management, if we're going to reflect back, just look sa mga na-experience nyo all throughout elementary to college na the more you take on projects, the more you take on tasks, natututo kayo kung ano, ano yung need you improve and you organize. Um, di pala organize, prioritize. So, ibig sabihin, um, skill din talaga for us students, especially when you graduate and go into the industry, you should be able to learn organizational and multitasking skill, uh, multitasking skills in such a way that alam mo kung paano mo i-prioritize ang specific task sa isang certain project. Ayan. And to wrap everything up, what you need to know about project management is definitely the project management um, terminologies which I have shared with you guys. Five phases. Ayan. We have the um, initiation phase. Ayan. With agile, envision, speculate, explore adapt and close planning and having the right documents what do i mean by this so if you dive further into project management may mga specific documents that will be um, helpful in organizing your project may mga gantt charts na tinatawag ayan you can definitely practice those in yun usually gamit na gamit ko is from when i was still doing our thesis up until now and charts to be able to organize what you need to do in a certain amount of time and other templates so may mga templates kasi na ginagamit ang mga project managers in a specific type of projects so those are the doc 
uh, documents that they're referring to. And, ayun, Adja, is it the end ba? Wala na, finish na, sabi ni Kuya. Definitely, um, project management is definitely a lifelong journey and process na every project that you would be doing, you would definitely learn a lot of things and realize na this is something that I would be needing to improve on to be able to be more effective and efficient in what I do. And even though in the future, kung hindi ka, if you don't plan to be a project manager, you would still be able to have that skill on how to um, be able to, um, how would you call this, to be able to be effective in being a team member and also being a manager in the future, how you delegate tasks, how you work on tasks, and how you properly communicate with your peers as well. Ayan, everyone, I hope you enjoyed my presentation for today. And let me know what you want to learn next by leaving me a feedback here. I'd be giving you time to scan the QR code of uh, let me know uh, what you want to learn about next, any certain type of topics. You can also click the link on the chat. Ayan, I value your time and I also appreciate that you're spending your time with us and learning on a Saturday. Ayan. So go ahead and let me know um, your feedback. And to find me, you can um, follow me on my social media accounts at Shaabi on Facebook and YouTube. I also share other free webinars um, and resources as well. You can um, professionally connect with me on LinkedIn, Athena at Shaabi. I'm also on Instagram and Twitter at Abe, And I also share other content, the talks that I do whether it may be tech or not entertainment on my YouTube channel, um, you can follow, um, subscribe to my YouTube channel at Sa Abit to learn more. Ayan. Okay. And that ends my presentation. Again, thank you for your time and I hope you learned a lot today. Yes. Thank you so much, Miss Athena, for that enlightenment enlightening and informative presentation about project management and guys don't forget to send a feedback to miss athena the links are in the chat box and all her social media accounts are there too and yeah thank you so much for the work experiences that you have shared to us which might be or will be very helpful for us in the future especially that most of us are here are good way thing students already so um thank you so much for that so our dear participants um your if you have any questions your questions will now be entertained by our speaker and the questions you can type it in the chat box below thank you uh, Ms. Acha, while waiting for our participants to formulate their questions i think i might have a general question to kick off the q a if that's okay sure. Um, yeah, so most of us here are graduating students, fourth years, and getting ready to transition into the professional world. But since you were a computer science graduate, right? Um, yes. At what point did you feel like you stopped being a college student? Or could you describe the journey that led up to you feeling like you can now say, I'm a project manager, or, I'm a public speaker, or more so, how did your, how useful were your learnings from college in helping you with that journey? It's really a good question. I never honestly felt that I am at and doing my profession at the moment while being a college student. Definitely, it felt unusual for me to be able to be in that prof a profession while I was still a student. I've experienced a lot of imposter syndrome because when I was starting, um, I wasn't given the I didn't expect the opportunity for me to arrive earlier, um, even when I was still a student. Because I've had experiences wherein I was um, sharing the free knowledge to other people online. It was still during a pandemic. And one of the feedbacks that people said to me, some of them said, na, how would you consider yourself a mentor if you're still a student? Wala ka namang experience, wala kang work experience. So how would you say na you would consider yourself a mentor? So that's why I never thought and even until now think um, of myself as someone on that position. Kasi at the end of the day, we are all still learning. The, we wouldn't say na, ah, ito, magaling ako sa ganito, ganyan. It's still a learning, pro um, a learning in progress type of experience. 
And when I started, kasi, uh, the first job that I had, I didn't apply for it. I was invited by a company to do a talk about Figma, and I was interviewed on the spot by the CEO. I was still a student back then, wala pang experience, pero I took that risk. And kasi, um, why would I be invited? Hindi naman ako developer, hindi naman ako um, web designer, pero I was invited to do that talk. And after that um, talk, after that interview, I started my first job the following week as a social media manager. So definitely, yung mindset ko before, mag-aaral ako, pag-aaral ko, mag-graduate ako, pag-graduate ko, sa ako mag ng trabaho. Pero if people see the potential in you and you are really passionate in what you're doing to be able to help other people be empowered to um, achieve their goals and their expertise. Pag alam nilang may kakayahan ka sa isang bagay na gusto mong gawin, you don't need to prove them of what you're capable of kung saan dadating yung opportunity for you. Kaya when during that time, I was still in third year college working as an application analyst as a, and as a um, community manager, I didn't think of myself na talagang uh, ito ako, ito yung kaya kong gawin, ganito na yung kaya ko. Um, kasi totoo talaga paling sinasabi nila in a tech field, learning never stops. And I still reach out to my colleagues when I need help. We help each other even until now. And that's, is, that is what is helping me to be more effective in my role is to be able to really um, collaborate and engage with the other people that you work with. And then from there, you would be able to say na, nagagawa ko yung trabaho ko. Kasi it's not just a one-man team. We help each other to be able to um, achieve yung need natin magawa. So I hope uh, that answers your question. Thank you, Ms. Acha. That was really insightful and it's kind of a lot in line with some advice that I've heard before regarding uh, professional or personal projects and how it involves three things um not just skill but you also need to have passion and determination so that was really insightful for um us as graduating students thank you again and i think we have some questions now in the chat box that kayla can read for us yes i do believe that our first question here is from marcy and she asked if um, do you use any AI tools related to project management? Ayan. Good question, Marcy. So a lot of tools that I use in project management, it depends on the type. So um, some tools that I have used are mostly social media based because I was working for a community type based of projects. So with the tools that I was using are mostly um, social media management tools like Sprout, Hootsuite, um, siyempre hindi mawawala yung Grammarly, malaking bagay talaga yan hanggang ngayon I'm not confident with my grammar so those are types of examples and definitely chat GPT can be a tool used in project management I have heard that they now have a, mob a mobile app for chat GPT so if you haven't um, dis ex explored that yet you can definitely download the chat GPT app so for definitely for project management that would be helpful in such a way na you'd be able to learn more of the different tools and resources or techniques that you can do in a specific type of project. Thank you so much, Ms. Acha. And our second question we have here is from Alicia. She said, if you are starting your career as a project manager, which company environment would you rec recommend for your growth, startup or mid to big company? Ayan, good question, Alicia. So, malaking bagay din ang company culture or environment, especially if you're starting to um, gain experience as a project manager. And I would say, um, one thing for um, I would recommend for your growth is to be in an environment with um, kung saan ka interested. So, depending sa field na interested ka, say for example, you're interested to do projects when it comes to designing, ganyan. So you can either be on a designing company, say, for example, Canva. If you're working as a project manager for Canva, um, dun, makakasa mo yung skills mo. Going to your second question, startup or mid or big company, I wouldn't 
um, choose within those options. Why? Because even though, say, for example, you're working for a startup, you're working for a mid com uh, mid or big company, but the project is complex. So, wala siya sa laki ng company, but it um, depends on the complexity of the project. You can be working for a big company with a, a very, very simple and short task, or you can either be working for a startup company na napaka complex and it would take you a year to accomplish that project. So I would say go to a company environment that you're mostly interested to work for and work with. And when it comes to the um, size of the company, it still depends on the type of project. Um, that you're going to be working for um, with them. Yes, thank you so much again. And our third question is from Patricia. Uh, she said, would it be possible for a fresh graduate to obtain a position as a project manager? I am also a good question. Yes and no. So why? Um, I'm also exploring um, project management roles right now. And usually kasi with the industry, they would say na, ah, you need three years experience. So when I worked as a technical community manager, yung job requirement dun is kailangan may three years experience ka na. Pero there, um, how I'm able to get that position without any type of experience is through my social media management skills. So still apply for that type of job double check yung job um, requirements uh, still apply for it and take that interview you wouldn't know if you would um, get that position or not if you do not apply for it it's possible yes if you have that um, a specific type of skill that they are looking for without any prior experience at the same time i would say no because there are certain job openings for project managers that would need you to require a PMP certification. So you kasi for project managers, meron tayong tinatawag na PMP certification na they yun yung parang magpapa-legitimize sa na isa ka talaga professional um project manager. Um we're in for you to be able to take that certification, you would still need 5 years of experience. Although there's a specific companies, say for example, I'm working for Power Technology and they're looking for a project manager right now, you can still apply and the company will be um, sagut nila yung training and fee for the certification. So those are different types of scenarios that you will be considering if you are a fresh grad um, trying to apply um, in a position as a project manager. Nice. And I believe this will be our last question for Ms. Acha. Um, JM asked, how do we ensure that a project stays within its scope, budget, and timeline while, while also meeting the expectations of all stakeholders? And if may conflict daw po ba sa professor, paano niyo po yun nakakandal to accomplish the project with just within two to three months? I am. Very good question, as always, JM. So how to ensure a project stays within its scope, budget, and timeline is to be able to identify yung um, certain tasks na talagang priority. Kasi uh, may mga types of people, ako, I would consider myself this one. Kahit, let's imagine you're going to do chores. Kung are, mag, mag, um, magwawalis ka, maghuhugas ka ng pinggan, maglalaba. Ako kasi yung type of tao tulad kanina, naglinis ako ng kwarto, di nagwalis ako, nagayos ako ng gamit, may nakita, may nakita ako sa gamit ko, iba na yung ginagawa ko, pero magwawalis dapat ako. Same logic when it comes to project management, mag-focus ka sa need mo talaga gawin, baka mamaya nagwawalis ka pero nag-Netflix ka na pala, di ba? So, it takes a lot of discipline to be able to focus on the task that you need to accomplish in a specific type of project. Especially given na two to three months lang meron ka, ka nagiging challenge talaga siya. Minsan mahirap talaga siyang maiwasan. Pero for you to ensure that the task that you need to do stays within the scope, the budget, and the timeline is to be able to prioritize it. Kung ano need gawin. Hindi mo pwedeng pagsabayin lahat. It's not possible for you to do everything all at once. Learn how to delegate properly 
And for you to be able to meet the expectations of your stakeholders is to be able to really give them an update from time to time. Kasi I've also had an experience for in ginagawa ko yung mga need ko in. I'm staying on track at the same time. Sasabihin ni stakeholder, ay, um, din nagbago yung isip ko. Pwede bang ganito na lang gawin kaysa ganyan? So, kailangan handa ka sa mga ganun. That's what we call scope creep. There's also possible projects wherein they would be wanting you to do a specific type of feature in an application or in a project na hindi necessary. How are you going to be able to deal with that with your stakeholder? Explain with them. Okay, so kung gusto mong gawin tong feature na to, ganito yung mangyayari, there, there's going to be delays, this is going to affect the budget, the timeline, and also the outcome as well. So if you have a conflict with your professor, you should be able to be transparent with them and to be able to tell them what is the current progress of the application. Although it's expected that they won't be able to really, um, some professors don't, won't be able to really understand yung progress natin kasi they have a lot of expectations from us. Yung tipong, okay, gagawa kayo na system, tingin sa atin mga developer na tayo, pero hindi pa, estudyante pa lang tayo. Diba? O, diba? Nakaka-relate kayo dyan. So, Communicate with them. Ma'am, sir, ito lang po yung kaya namin. Nasa gantong stage po kami. And then, it's either they would be helping you um, or you can find ways to be able to reach people in the community, find mentors na um, ano yung pwede niyong gawin. So, when I was a community manager, syempre hindi naman dev yung focus ko at that time. It was more on social media management. I was talking to fellow developers na ano, ba, ano po bang magandang domain na gamitin? Ano po bang magandang programming language na gamitin? Doon magkakaroon kayo ng idea kung paano nyo mapapadali at mas mapapaganda yung project nyo. Ayan. So within two to three months, um, check resources, ask for help. Huwag kayo may hiya magtanong. May kasunod yun. Pero I hope I answered your question. Pero... Just always be open and transparent. Kung yung sabihin, ay, kaya ko po yan, pero hindi pala. Kasi kayo lang din yung maapektuhan at the end of the day. All right. So that concludes the question and answer portion for the lovely Miss Abby. Thank you again for your time. And everyone else, please don't forget to subscribe and follow her socials. And we now proceed to the awarding of the certificate. Okay, so a certificate of recognition is given to Ms. Athena Aliafe Abe for her service and contribution as a speaker for the event entitled Conquer 2023, Fighting Against the Fears in the Tech World, held via Google Meet from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m., given this 15th of April in the year of our Lord, 2023. Signed by Assistant Professor Engineer William A. Cortez, the course facilitator, and signed by... Mar Marcy Villegas project leader. Thank you. Thank you so much, Miss Athena. But before you go, um, may we ask everyone to um, open their cameras and let us take a quick group photo with Miss Acha, if that's all right with you guys. All right, everybody, smile on the camera in three, two, one, smile. All right, I believe um, our technical pe tech people have already screenshotted that photo. Again, thank you so much, Miss Athena, for that wonderful message of yours. 